This tutorial focuses on microblogs. Um, the main microblog that's available to us and um, that's being used at, at this po point in time is Twitter. Uh, there are lots of other ones used in different um, locations, but this one is by far the largest. So we're going to kick off by asking the simple question, what is a microblog? Well, the easy answer is we're after looking at blogs and it's a short form version of that. Um, it used to be 140 characters in text and now it's uh, gone to 280 characters in text. But it's, it's actually, the way it's set up is really it's a way of, of posting very, very short snippets of information and to engage people with this as quickly as possible. What are microblogs? Microblogs are shorter form blogs which allow users to exchange smaller elements of content such as single sentences, a single image, or a video link. Examples include Tumblr and oftentimes social media status updates like Twitter and Facebook. Okay. Um, now there's a term on this which is I, I quite like is the whole idea of bite-sized chunks. People like that. People like to be able to scan and to be able to see what's interesting to them and then if they want more information be able to click off click on that and, and jump off to another place and get ideas around that. So it's a very quick way of of disseminating information but also of gathering information and seeing what's what's happening. So really it's like headlines. Um, so what's different between you know a blog and a microblog and other forms of, of interaction? Well, this is a very simple diagram here, but I quite like it. Um, for starters, you've got on one axis, you've got private or public. And on the other axis, you've got the level of frequency. So when you just think about blogs and you know instant messaging and SMS and email and so on and where they fit, into this particular diagram here. I think it's it's quite nice to see what's going on here. For starters, you know, we, we would normally expect um, when people are, you know, tweeting that they're going to tweet more often than they would blog, okay? So it's a higher level of frequency. The same with your tweets are normally more, more often than your email and so on. But as well as that, when you think about email I and mean, you think about messaging and instant messaging and SMS, when you think about all of these text messaging uh, approaches, they're normally going to private individuals, okay? Whereas the microblog is public and it's on a public domain and it's available to everyone, okay? So it's it's looking at its, its frequency and its privacy. And uh, it kind of sets it apart from other channels because of this, you know, you're, you're normally expecting, you know, a relatively high frequency without being over the top. I think, you know, there's a, a happy medium to be met there and um, it's you know it's public so just jumping into this next little bit here which is kind of interesting I'm just going to just jump around here for starters there are many different types of uh, microblogging channels here but by far as I mentioned earlier on the most interesting and most commonly used is Twitter okay what else do we need to know about it? well for starters the usage when you look at this you know, there's 82 million people accessing Twitter on desktops as opposed to 31 million on smartphones every month. Now, I guarantee if that question was asked off the top, is Twitter mainly a mobile or a desktop stroke laptop um, platform? I think everybody would have leaned towards the smartphone scenario. So with regards to the types of usage, you know, what you've got to remember is maybe large companies are using desktops because it's easier to disseminate tweets and to get them out there. Um, whereas maybe personal use, we're, we're leaning towards more the, the, the smartphone type scenario. Right, with regards to demographics here, 53% um, male, 47% female. You know, that's, you know, most people would probably think you're leaning towards, you know, mainly, you know, male orientated channel. Uh, but it's not overly, you know, it's not overly strong there with that 53 versus 47. You're talking about 36% of Twitter users are aged between 18 and 39, or 29. Again, yeah, that's fair enough. But then there's quite a few that aren't in that age bracket. And then on top of that, you're talking about users that earn between 20 and 40, 49 thousand dollars. That's 18%. Again, it's not hugely 
strong there either. With regards to the ads and the ad usage here, um, 29% promote, promoted tweets can be boost offline sales by 29%, okay? So that's what we're talking about is a channel pushing another channel here. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's difficult to see um, the effect of our um, digital channels and whether they're having a direct effect on sales, etc. Um, but there's also a lot going on with, you know, with, with the whole idea of Twitter and promoted videos as well. Jumping in here. Engagement. Now, this is important here. 92% of companies tweet more than once a day. 42% tweet between one and five times. 19% between six and ten times. If you're tweeting, you know, a hundred times a day, you have to be tweeting gold. It's as simple as that. You can't be tweeting rubbish because people will unfollow you as quickly as you do like here. Um, now, something we've seen on other channels here, tweets with videos are six times more likely to be retweeted. Tweets with videos are three times more likely to be retweeted than than tweeted than ones with, with animated GIFs, okay? So six times more likely than ones with just images alone. So, you know, that's telling you lean towards your media, lean towards your engagement um, through your media as well. Finally here, we've got um, the whole idea of an average Twitter users, uh, follows, a user follows five businesses, okay? 85% of search happens on, a, on Pinterest every month. Okay, so we're seeing other other channels drip, dripping into this as well. Okay, so just that was just a little touch on, on what um, Twitter is and, and, and who is involved in it. But the one thing that's really you've got to keep in mind is Google finds what ha has happened already. When you look at Google and what it does, it's a, it's a stored index of files that they've searched on the web. Whereas Twitter finds what's happening right now. So it's a very, very live, real-time channel. Okay, Twitter by numbers here. It has its limitations, we know that. Okay, so let's have a quick look at these here. Some of them I don't think are major limitations, but we'll talk about them anyway. Uh, first of all, maximum number of characters you can have in your username. Now, for starters, your Twitter handle is very, very important, okay? So come up with something short, snappy, and memorable. Next one up, 140 characters. This has changed to 280 characters. So um, the reason it's changed is because one, at 140 characters, 9% of people using Twitter were running out of characters. 9% of tweets ran out of characters. Um, it, it has moved to 280 characters um, and 2%. We're down to 2% of people tweeting are running out of characters now. You know, arguably it was stronger at 140 characters in that um, it focused the mind. All right. So it actually really was, you had to have nugget. It really had to have really good stuff in there. Um, 280 characters, which isn't, isn't huge either. Um you know, allows a little bit more room for maneuver. Maximum number of tweets you're allowed to make per day, 1,000. Is that a limitation? Arguably not. Because if you're tweeting 1,000 times, you really, really, really have to be tweeting gold, as I mentioned earlier on. 250 is the number of direct messages you can send per day. Now, that, this, is, this is, if you ever were given it, this is it. This is a, a, a clear indication that Twitter is not set up as a direct messaging forum. There are lots of other really good ones out there, but Twitter is, they're not angling towards that. Next one up is 150, maximum number of API requests per hour. All right, we're gonna skip that one because it's, that's really requests made of the server and so on, okay? And the number of followers that anyone can follow without a follow ratio applying. So, you know, Really what you're hoping is when you follow, they will follow you. So you'll have a, you'll be improving your ratio all the way through. Um, but it says you can only follow uh, 2,000 accounts before somebody starts following you back and you're starting to work on the other aspects of the ratio. Any other limitation? Well, when Twitter was set up originally, 
it was a you know it was text text only and then in around 2011 they rolled out images and then after that they rolled out video so um it, it's after changing somewhat okay so image guidelines minimum um the minimum size for pairs is, is 440 by 220 pixels um you can tweet up to four images at one time maximum image size is 1024 by 5 we'll look at this all right we'll look at the uh, the actual resizing an image making sure that it works per perfectly for you maximum file size is five megs per photograph and um on a mobile and 15 on the web okay so slight different variations when you're dealing with um you know uh you know animated gifs and so on and and, and photographs etc right recording videos well the maximum video length is two minutes and 20 seconds. Now, this is interesting because what is two minutes and 20 seconds? Many, many seconds is 140 seconds. So what they did was 140 seconds as opposed to 140 characters. So that's the, the way they looked at this originally. So two minutes and 20 seconds, again, short, short videos. Okay. Um, Specs of your videos are here and you can just Google them and you can see them, what your specs are with regards to recommended size, recommended resolutions and whether you're dealing with horizontal or vertical videos as to the size of them and so on. So it's good to know those things if you're going to be uploading video onto Twitter. Right. As I said before, it's both a mobile and a desktop um, channel and um, medium. So you know it works it works very simply and very very well so the first thing we've got to do when we before we get started on on setting up a twitter account is we have to talk about a couple of things here the first thing you got to do is pick the right handle the right profile picture and the right header image okay the whole idea is to put together your brand and to get it across to your customer as quickly as possible and as easy as possible and as memorably as possible so in this case here when you're looking at something you know, you've got to pick your right handle. So, you know, um, have a look to see if your username is available or not. If it's not available, you know, it's here are a few hints on maybe ways of getting around that. So you might turn around and like I did uh, with with uh, blogs before is if a blog isn't available, I was looking for walk with me. I put in walk with me Ireland and so on or walk with me Wicklow or whatever the case might be. So you might do something like that. So. Um, as you can see here, all of these are strings, all right? There's no gaps, as you can see in here. You can use capitals and smalls, obviously, and you can use, you know, different dashes and so on, but um, be careful with them. Right, um, don't come across ones with, you know, what it's saying is try to avoid putting numbers in here, okay? Unless, obviously, you know, the name of your restaurant is Talbot 101 or whatever, but, you know, if you went... Uh, Patrick Horn 42 it sounds you know spammy it sounds like somebody just made it up this morning and put no time and effort into it and so on so I'm just going to go to this website here which is quite a good way to start here and it's name checker okay and if I go to name checker I can literally type in the name that I want and see if it's available on on, on a load of different uh, platforms so um it's taking long and hard about jumping into name checker here for me so I'm going to go across to uh, my browser here and name checkers there okay namechecker.com and if i come along here and i type in walk with me and i search for it it'll tell me whether it's available on these different platforms okay whether pinterest and so on are available and uh, and what's happening with regards to the other channels there are more down here uh, normally it's quicker than this i might add um it's taking long and hard about all this at the moment okay Okay, and it's starting to come in here and you can see that it's available on Foursquare, but it's not really available on many of the other ones. Uh, it's available on Twitch and it's available on Meetup and so on, but it's not really available in these other places. Now, the reason for that is because I've actually got it on a lot of those other places. So if I try another one here, Eurocree, I'll type it in the way I want it actually. Cree, not that it makes any difference with, with this particular aspect here, but 22. 
and I search for that. Hopefully it'll be a little bit quicker here in this one because normally it's very quick and you can see it's available on Tum Tumblr on YouTube. Um, it's available on the .org domain, which is what I would actually be looking for it here. It's available .com. Um, you know, so it's not available on Twitter, um, but it is available on a lot of the other ones. Okay, so if I want to, I could actually check more, load more, and it shows me more here. If you notice here, there's, you know, not all of our channels that we would expect are available here. So Instagram's not available. You might need to check that on your own. But, but it's a good way of checking to see whether, you know, if you decide on a specific domain or a specific handle, whether you can use it across a number of different platforms. Because if you start using different variations of the one handle, it gets a little bit confusing for people because they might be saying, is that, you know, is that Eurocree 2022 or is it Eurocree? You know, if I turn around and say, you know, Eurocree 2022 and I search for that, see if it's available and just say I did want it on Twitter, it's still not available on Twitter here and so on. So you can see um, that, you know, what it is available and what it's not available on. So that's a good way of doing it. Of course, you can go to each one individually and check it individually, but it's a good way of figuring out whether a name is available or not um, for use, okay? So let's get started with these here um, and look at these profile pictures and look at the images here, okay? So if we just look at these profile pictures here, um, you can see that three of the six, well, four of the six are using images and two of them are using you know, well, they're all using the images, but you can see text as part of your their, their, um, their profile pic. You know, to be quite honest, some of them are, you, are okay. This one here is, you know, I don't particularly like it. It looks like somebody's taking a picture out of the side of a car, driving by the front of a building. It doesn't look like there's much time and effort put into it, okay? Um, and you can see the actual, um, the names that they're using, all right? So Box HQ, Caterpillar Inc., all right? Ask Aaron Lee and so on. So, you know, a lot of them are short, catchy. They're, um, they are, you know, obviously attached to the name. They're associated with the name. But the image, the actual profile picture is very important. Right, we're going to have a quick look at this here a second. Um, these are important. I, I, would, I would advise anyone setting up any account to put a smidgen of, of, uh, of work into this, okay? It won't take long. It doesn't take long to do this. But what I'm actually going to look at here is the whole idea of the profile picture. The profile picture is 400 by 400. And for uh, Twitter, the cover photograph on top is 1,500 pixels across by 500 pixels down. And when you're talking about all of these, it's very important also to look at your, your brand, your company name, your biography, and your website. So think about these things. These are the things that go into a good profile, okay? Um, but time and effort, it says keyword rich description of the page. Really good to get them in there. Punchy, something snappy, something understandable, but keyword rich. Okay, so we're going to have a quick look here at resizing the um, the profile photo, and we're going to have a you know at uh, looking at the cover uh, cover photo again. I'm going to just jump out here, and I'm going to use a website called uh, Be Funky. We've used it before, but we'll use it again. And we're going to get, get started, okay? So I'm only going to edit the photograph. That's all I'm going to do here. Obviously, as I mentioned before, if you have Photoshop, by all means, use Photoshop. Um, so in my case here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, and I have a number of images here. And the one I'm going to start off with is this one here. Um, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this. All right, my, the size of this image now is 1024 by 1024. The size of the logo that goes into Twitter is going to be um, 400 by 400. So I keep the aspect ratio here and I type it, bring this down to 400 by 400. That's simply it, okay? Save that. That's all I want to do with this. Save. I'm going to save it as another name. Walk with me Twitter logo, save it as either a JPEG or a PNG, okay? The difference is the PNG allows transparency around it, whereas a JPEG doesn't, okay? I'm going to save with, with transparency and then save. Okay. 
and saved it onto my uh, into my download folder. Now, what I'm going to do is I've saved my image in there as saved into the, the blog folder. So into the one spot, keep it like that. Right, while I'm at it here, I'm going to open up another image here and you see how straightforward this is. Now we played around with this one before here. Um, and what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for an image, a large image called Glendale County Wicklow. And again, what I'm going to do with this one is very straightforward, okay? I'm going to make sure that this image here fits nicely across my um, my top, okay, my header, and it's going to be 1,500 by 500. So if I just go resize at the moment, I can see that my image at the moment is 1,920 by 1,282. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it first of all, all right? And when I crop it, it'll actually show me when I'm on the corner here, what I need it to be is 1500 by 500. Okay, 1500 Now don't worry about the size of the image I've got here by 500. Okay, I can change it here, it's easier. 1500 by 500, okay? Now, what I have here is this, I can move this around and I can say, listen, this is the part that I want to take here, 1500 by 500, something like that, okay? Or just say I want that picture of the, or this picture up here, whatever. So I can take whatever I want. So it is not like click on the correct here, does it actually crop it? So I'm gonna say that's this is exactly the bit that I want, okay? And I'm just going to go crop it and it crops it to that size. Okay. Now that's 1500 pixels across by 500 pixels down. If I look at this, you can see 1500 by 500, exactly what I want. Okay. Now, as I said earlier on, if you wanted to, and I did in a previous tutorial, if you want to add a bit of text, you can here and you can go, in my case here, if I go walk with me, right, I center it. Right, and I change my font from black to white. Put it in bold. Now I have walk with me as my, my center text. Okay. If I need to make it bigger, obviously I can play around with that, and make it bigger. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna pretend I'm absolutely ecstatic with that, and I'm gonna go save the computer. I'm gonna go Glendalock County Wicklow. Then the lock, we call it Twitter header and go save. And again, I'm going to copy this into my blog folder because I mean, that's where I have all my files into one place and I'm happy as Larry with that. Okay. So what I've done is I've played around with my, my images. I've resized them. I've added text to them. I've cropped them. Um, and now they should be good to go with my, um, my profile. So that's it done.